Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is video number 105 of Small Engines Questions and Answers and I want to welcome all you guys back. We've just had a bit of rain today, well quite a bit actually. As you can see my test drum is full of water and there's a few drops starting to fall again. It's been really dry here in this part of the country this summer so it's really nice to see some rain come by. So I'm going to get right into the questions today. My first question is, can I use anti-seize on a spark plug? Well, the answer to that is yes, but be very careful when you do so, and I'm just going to show you why. Here's some copper anti-seizer I have. It doesn't matter if it's copper or the gray stuff. So when you put it on your spark plug, you don't want to get the anti-seize where the electrode is over here. I would put it just way back here. And you don't need much, just a little bit and then put it in. This way you know that the anti-seize is not going to get right here and fall up your plug or make it not run properly. I know that some people use anti-seize on some automotive spark plugs because sometimes they do tend to get fused right in the head. And just so you know I rarely use anti-seize on spark plugs for small engines but if you feel like you have to then go ahead and do it but just follow the instructions that I just showed you previously. And my next question a YouTuber asked me why does my chainsaw die when I go to throttle up? Well, this is a topic I've touched in some other Q&As, and usually what it ends up being is just that the carburetor needs to be adjusted by turning out the L and the H screw slightly. What's going on is sometimes it's not getting enough gas and it's going to die like that. Now that's assuming that your chainsaw has an adjustable carburetor. And here's a carburetor here, so these would be the two screws you would turn out slightly. You can turn them out slowly until you can throttle up. Now if your chainsaw does not have an adjustable carburetor like some of these smaller chainsaws then you may want to tear down the carburetor and check the carb kit in it. Also you want to make sure it's got good compression because if it doesn't you're never going to be able to adjust the carburetor properly. So I'll try adjusting the carburetor in small increments of about one eighth of an inch. It's much cheaper than spending money on parts that you may not need. But if that doesn't do the trick, then you may want to look further into your chainsaw as to what's going on. Now, like I mentioned in another Q&A, the same principle will apply to many small gas engines with an adjustable carburetor like that. My next question is about outboard motors, and sometimes people ask me if they can still get parts for their older outboards. As you can see, there's an older motor behind me. It's a Mercury 9.8 horsepower. And unfortunately, some of the parts for that motor behind me are not available anymore. That engine was made in about 1976. Some parts are available, but a lot of parts are not available for it. So that's the answer to that question, is because after a certain amount of time, they don't make all the parts that you need to fix your engine, including the lower end unit. Carburetor parts are easy to get, impellers, you can get your propeller fixed by an aftermarket company if you want. But I've noticed that some parts inside the engine and the whole unit are not available because I had to order a part for somebody the other day and the part wasn't available anymore. So you either have to hunt down a used motor or go on eBay to try to find a used part and sometimes people do gouge you because they know that you cannot get these parts anymore. And if all you're missing is one part to get your motor going, they know that. They know you're going to pay top dollar. So what I'm going to recommend to you is always try to hunt down a used motor that is identical to what you have. Even if it doesn't run, you may be very happy in the future if you do need one part that you cannot get anymore. You may just end up saving your motor's life by having a second one for parts. And sometimes it's cheaper to buy a whole used motor than buying individual parts off eBay or some kind of listing on the internet. And another thing I want to tell you guys is if you're going to buy a used motor, don't pay top dollar unless it's in immaculate condition. Also, if it does need parts, make sure that the parts are available before you actually buy the motor. And another question on this specific motor is sometimes people ask me, does mine have a thermostat? How can I know if it does or not? Well, on these motors, if you have a thermostat, it's going to be right over here. To access the thermostat, you'd have to pop off this clip and it's under there. If you don't have a thermostat, it's just going to connect to the water connector on the engine and you're not going to see this part over here. Now the thing I want to explain to you is if you have a thermostat, the water is not going to start coming out of the small hole over here when you start the engine until it's warm. And that's the little hole I'm talking about that shoots out the water that cools the engine. So don't panic and think that your impeller is shot right away. So if you have the thermostat, just give it a minute or two and you should see water coming out. If you don't see water coming out after a while, then you may want to check the thermostat and or 
the impeller down in the lower unit. In a previous q and I had talked about that you should always put your motor inside of a test tank when starting it so that your engine can cool itself. Well, I forgot to mention that there's an alternative to sticking it into a barrel to test it. You can get these muffs that go at the bottom of the motor and then you connect it to your garden hose and this will feed water to your motor so that you don't need to test it in a test tank. And here's a set of these muffs. You can buy different ones, cheaper ones if you want. But I prefer these ones because they have a bigger coverage area here and the water comes in from both sides. So you connect your garden hose over here. And what you do is if your motor has holes over here for the water to go in, you would put the muffs over there, turn your garden hose on, the water is going to come out, and then when you start it, it's going to suck up the water through the impeller and cool the engine. Now on this motor here, I cannot use these muffs because the intake port for the water is right up here as you can see underneath here. So you may want to use a big tub of water for this or a test tank as I've mentioned but some people do not have a test tank or a drum. Now if you don't have a test drum like this the next best thing would be to get a large tub. You can buy these at Walmart or other stores but make sure that the intake port for the water is actually sticking into the tub and that it's full of water all the time. You want to make sure also that your propeller doesn't rub on the tub and cause damage. These muffs here I find come in really handy when you're working on a motor that is actually stationary on the boat. That way you don't need to take the motor off the boat just to test it out. Again, I'm not a marine technician. I don't profess to be one, but I'm just sharing these tips with you guys. If some of you are marine technicians out there, feel free to comment. Even if you're not a technician, you can comment if you have any suggestions that can be helpful to everybody watching today. Now here's that chainsaw again. And another question I got is, how come my carburetor is flooding? There's actually gas coming out of it. Now this can apply again to any small two cycle engine with a carburetor with diaphragms. Well what could be happening is that you need a new carburetor kit along with the needle valve over here. So get a complete rebuild kit because they do sell kits where you do not get the needle valve like this and sometimes this is all that needs to be replaced. It doesn't cost much to do and you can probably do it yourself by following some of my videos. But if you're not too mechanically inclined, it may just be cheaper for you to just go buy a whole brand new carburetor. In the US especially, they do not cost that much. And then you don't have to mess around with diaphragms and carburetor kit and all that. It comes all assembled, ready to be put on your equipment. Another thing that could be causing your carburetor to flood a lot is if your gas cap is venting properly. So you may want to start by investing in a new gas cap to try to resolve your problem. Before I end off today's q and I just want to show you an addition I made to the MIG and arc welding cart that I made previously. And that is I added an extra piece of metal here for the cords to be wrapped around. All I had before was one of these and the cords were pretty tight. So somebody suggested me adding another one over here, which is a YouTuber by the way. So I just made an identical one, welded it on, and now the cords go on much better. If you haven't seen me build this card, I'm going to post the link underneath this video so you can go take a look. And another tip today is if you do have a MIG welder or plan to get one, I do highly recommend that you get it with the Argon gas mixture. I find that my welds are 10 times better using the gas than if I just use a flux cord wire. And by the way, I think any small engine shop owner should own one of these. Anyways guys, I've been very busy this summer. It's been hard for me to answer every question. So it's not that your questions are not important. I actually read every question that I receive from you guys and I appreciate you guys sending me your questions. But with my schedule, it just makes it impossible to get at every question, but keep sending them anyway. So thanks again for watching. Have a great weekend and we'll see you in two weeks.